Hey, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Happy Monday. Well, it's a beautiful day out here today. The sun is shining, but it is cold and chilly, chilly out today. But God bless our farm and God bless you guys wherever you are today. So I've been thinking about Coffee with Christ here. Um, and I, I'm thinking how I'm going to move forward here is since my uh, sermons and my messages are posted on the High Plains page and on uh, Coffee with Christ with Shalise page, I think on Mondays um, I am not going to be live. I'm just going to maybe put a post, you know, to, you know, make sure you watch the message and stuff on the Facebook pages. And then on Wednesday and Fridays, we will continue with the books of the Bible. That gives me a little more time to prepare um, and get some more acts of kindness and get some more, you know, prayers going and all that. So um, I think we're going to try that for next week. So Mondays, I will not be live, but Wednesdays and Fridays, um, we're going to continue with the books of the Bible because we are really moving along here. Um, so thank you for being with me today. God bless you. And let's get rolling into the morning affirmations. I am important. Today's going to be a great day. The world needs me. And today I choose happiness. I believe in myself. Today is a fresh and new start. Today I will do my best. And today and every day, God loves me and I am his child. We always need to remember that. Praise the Lord. And thanks for all your prayers for me. I was in a little funk last week, but your prayers worked. I'm good. God has a reason for winter and everything else. And so I just started counting my blessings. It didn't take me long to recover. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all that. So for our prayers this morning... Uh, I'd like to send out prayers to the McGregor family, little Ben. Um, I think he's probably, I'm not quite sure exactly how old he is, maybe six, seven years old. Um, he broke his leg skiing. Um, but from what I heard, he is being a real trooper. So Ben McGregor sends some prayers out. Uh, Tamara Bredesen requests prayers for her family, who has all come down with COVID. And also for a friend who is having hip surgery today. Prayers go out for Frances, um, Omas Sally from the Latin area, as she has been having some struggles um, with her dialysis and had a bleed last week and had to go and spend the night in Park River. Um, Frances just has such a tough time with that every now and then. So please keep Frances in your prayers. Prayers go out for Brandon Hoymies, girlfriend's stepmom, who was diagnosed with cancer and is starting chemo. Mm. So sad, but God is with her. Prayers continue to go out for Jim Berg from the New London area, who is also struggling with cancer, and also Shelly, his wife, and the whole family. Um, it's been just such a devastating time for them. But uh, they are very positive, very positive. So prayers continue to go up for Jim. Uh, Wayne Vegan, Margaret, Barb, Renee, Cole, Holden. Um, I seen on Facebook today that Holden is going, he either did yesterday or today, um, got to go out for his first outing with his friends. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So we have lots of acts of kindness, which are always fun. Um, we're going to start with Debbie Anderson because she's just got a whole bunch of them here. Um, Debbie shared uh, that she went to a quilt retreat and her brother, I believe it was Dean, uh, helped take care of her dogs when she was gone. God bless you, Dean. Boy, I know that you help your sister out a lot and I know how much she appreciates it as well. Um, she also shared that uh, she blew snow for her neighbor. And she packed up her friend's stuff at the quilt retreat because um, she all of a sudden got sick and needed to go home. And so her family members were coming to pick her up and bring her home. So she helped her gather up all her stuff so she could get going more quickly. 
Um, well, Debbie, doesn't surprise me with you. You're always doing something fantastic. Um, so I seen this deal, my old church back in Spicer, Faith Lutheran Church. They did these really neat things. I have to find out more about them because I'd like to share them with our ladies for our Welka here. But they called them Faith Freezer Meals. And so a bunch of the ladies um, got together and they paid, I don't know, a certain amount of money um, for the ingredients. And then they cooked up, baked up, whatever, a bunch of freezer meals. Now with that, um, the freezer meals are kept in the church. They, they, uh, <clears throat> they designate a certain amount. So let's say 10 freezer meals a week or a month or whatever, okay? They go in the church refrigerator for people around um, our community that um, might need a home-cooked meal once in a while. And then with that fee that, you know, the ladies pay to come in and do this, they also get to take some freezer meals home for them. Um, it, I have to find out more about it, but it was just so neat. So if any of you New London Spicer people are listening and know about this, um, please get a hold of me. You know, either on Messenger, text, a lot of you guys have my number, email, whatever. I would love to know more about that. I thought that was so neat. Um, my friend Christy from back home shared that her neighbor blew out her driveway. And what a blessing. Because uh, Christy is just a little gal. And she shovels her driveway and sidewalk each and every time. Whether it's an inch high or a foot high. And Christy, don't you know that I've seen on TV that people over 45 are not supposed to shovel? So God bless your neighbor for helping you out. i seen this on Facebook. I do not know this gal, but her name is Sharice, H or S-H-E-R-I-C-E. -E. Um, she stopped to help a trooper that was shot during just a normal traffic stop. And she made sure that she stayed with him and he got the help he needed. Wow, that's brave. That's brave. Thank, <laughs> even though we don't know you, thank you, Sharice. Um, uh, Matt, let's see. I have to read this on my phone because it was quite long. Pretty cool, though. Matt Mithaugen, he went to school with my son, Jay. He says, I just want to um, give grace to the gentleman that paid for my friend and my breakfast this morning. We ate at a truck stop, and an older gentleman was wearing what looked like a veteran hat. As I left, I stood up to ask if he served in, and um, shaked his hand. He said no, but he appreciated it and said, don't worry about your bill. I took care of it. I was very confused because he had no reason um, to do that. He said, I saw you and your friend praying before your meal. People often lose sight of the faith, prayer, or are too scared to be seen like that in public. Um, let's see. The fact that you did that and stood to stand up for strangers like me to shake my hand proves my point and gives me faith in people your age. The words meant more than the bill but thank you whoever you are that is cool matt matt is 31 and that's a different generation so i understand where that gentleman was coming from god bless you whoever you are april shared that she helped a young man pay for his things at the gas station he was a little short and she said he was so very thankful and she also shared with me that she's done that been there and so she knows what just little acts of kindness can mean. Uh, Mary, from back home, um, from Wilmer, helped an elderly lady with her groceries. Um, I've done that before, and that is so rewarding. Just warms your heart as well as helps them out. And Virginia shared that she made an 80-mile trip to pick up meds for a friend of hers, who is very, very sick. God bless you, Virginia. Yeah, we just do that stuff. We just do that stuff. Um, so um, I seen this. Let's see. Okay. Um, hang on, guys. 
Where is my blessing? Hang on. Here it is. So instead of an actual prayer, we're going to do our morning blessing because it's Monday and um, it's it's pretty much um, us together um, talking to God and praying. So here we go. You are a treasured masterpiece designed by God himself. Your smile, gifts, and insights were all woven together by a father who loves what he created in you. May your soul come to know it very well. I pray that you learn to trust him more than you trust yourself. May the sense of God's nearness grow stronger with each passing day. And may your confidence in his character grow exponentially too. May the God of all hope fill you with joy and peace as you trust in him. You are anchored to a good, good God. In Christ Jesus, you are secure, loved, called, and equipped. May you rise this hour and take your place in the greater kingdom story God is writing on the earth today. Love God. Love others. Love yourself. And have a blessed day. Amen. So, um, today, I know it's Monday, um, but I'm going to jump into the preface um, about these new books we're moving into, the poetry and wisdom books. And the explanation that I found um, on this is a little confusing. I went through, did some research, looked up some synonyms to make, try to make it as easy as possible for us to understand these books. Now, the poetry and wisdom books are... Um, is composed of five books, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastics, and then they call it the Song of Songs, um, but it is um, the Song of Solomon, okay? Now, these books are different from the rest of the Old Testament because they do not deal directly with Israel's life at a specific time in history. Rather, they reflect on the life of God's people and their relationship with him in a more general way. So Ecclesiastics, for instance, is written mostly in prose with a long poem at the end of the book. Now, when I think of Ecclesiastics, I think of for everything there is a reason, there is a time, all that kind of stuff. Um, and so you're probably asking what prose means, because I did too. And prose is writings that reproduce the way we normally speak. And besides being the word of God now, the Old Testament itself is beautiful and carefully written with literature. Um, and so prose and poetry can be a beautiful addition to the Old Testament. Now, poetry exists in other books of the Old Testament, such as the Song of Moses in Exodus, the Song of Deborah in Judges, and many passages through the prophets. Now, these books of poetry can often be mistaken as prose. Prose and the Hebrew poetry can often be intertwined, um, but I don't think it's a real big deal. So wisdom books deal with questions that affect humans everywhere and at any time. They include questions about human suffering, death, what makes for a good life, and knowledge for living. Poetry has a unique ability to express deep feelings and thoughts in effective and beautiful ways. And for that reason, poetry is the perfect instrument for wisdom. Now these books continue to be very important for us Christians yet today. Their main themes of praise and prayer, guidance for holy lives, our inner relationship with God and others around us, and their powerful evocative language continue to shape the hearts and minds of God's people. Now as we read Psalms, meditate on Proverbs, are moved by the beauty of the Song of Solomon and wrestle with the difficult topics of Job and Ecclesiastics, the Holy Spirit transforms and renews our hearts and minds. Now, in English, poetry is characterized primarily by measure and rhyme. 
okay? But Old Testament poetry is characterized primarily by conciseness, comparison, and symbolism. And Hebrew poetry is composed with short lines that say a lot in just a few words. And it is perhaps because of this characteristic that poetry is able to express concepts that are almost impossible to express otherwise. Now, parallel lines are an important feature of biblical poetry. Now, for example, what I mean by that, English language poetry normally has one line. For instance, a penny saved is a penny earned. But Hebrew poetry normally has two or three lines. An example, a fool finds pleasure in evil conduct, but a man of understanding delights in wisdom. <coughs> that comes from Proverbs 10, verse 23. Now, our impression of the poem is found in the exchange of these lines. Parallel, parallelism means that the second line of the verse advances the thought of the first line in some way. Now, determining how this movement occurs allows us to understand the sense and meaning of the poem. It's a little tricky there, but I think you know what I mean. In addition to conciseness and parallel lines, Hebrew poetry also contains heightened imagery. Powerful images and metaphors have a way of dwelling in and sparking our imagination so we understand God's revelation to us in an exceptional way. In Proverbs, wisdom is personalized as a woman. Well, of course, duh. <laughs> Sorry, Dean. <laughs> and of course, the wonderful... Um, though often difficult to understand images in the book of the Song of Solomon, um, such as eyes are compared to doves, hair to a flock of goats, teeth to newly shorn ewes, neck to the Tower of David, and so on. Um, all of that doesn't really pertain to us today because today one could hardly use those images to describe a loved one, right? Um, but this just shows us that we must be careful when understanding the images of poetical texts, which draw from the cultural world of ancient Israel, and not so much for us today. So that's really all I have um, for a preface on um, the poetic and wisdom books. And so on we uh, Wednesday, we'll jump into Job, and then Friday, we'll figure out what we learned from Job, which is one of my favorite days. Um, and so if you'd like to, oops, what the, I pressed a button. There we go. I almost lost it. Um, so if you want to uh, study up on Job, that's where we'll be on Wednesday. Um, so with that, um, I'd like to join in the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So before I go, I want to make sure to direct you um, to the Coffee with Christ Shalise Facebook page or the High Ministry page um, for yesterday's um, message. Um, and uh, you will get that instead of me reading it to you today. Um, and so with that, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord look upon each and every one of you with his favor and give you all his amazing peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is a gift from God, my friends. That is why they call today the present. Make the most of this beautiful day, because this is the day that the Lord has made. And let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. So, um, you guys have a great couple of days, and until Wednesday, God bless, and bye for now.